And we're live. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. That's right. right. So last week, we talked about Yahushua, right? The birth of Yahushua. But who came before Yahushua? You wouldn't even pay attention. John the Baptist, right? So John the Baptist came before Yahushua, right? So Yahushua came on the scene, but before he did, John the Baptist was born, right? Then we talked about how uh, a miracle happened because the, the, the angel came to Mary, told Mary, you're going to have a baby. And Mary was like, but I've never even been with a man. Like, I've never, you know what I'm saying? I've never, I've never been with a man. How am I going to have a baby? And he said, look, the spirit is going to do this, right? Something new going to happen, the prophecy say, right? So then after that, her, her soon-to-be husband, you know what I'm saying? He is looking like, well, I know I ain't been with her yet, and she already pregnant, so I'm about to divorce her. The angel came to him and was like, mm mm, -mm. He's pregnant due to the spirit. The spirit made this happen. You're going to have a son. His name is going to be called Yahushua, right? So then Yahushua was born, and we, we kind of talked a little bit about how he grew up. Y'all remember, he uh, first of all, when he was born, everybody was coming to see him, right? And they was hearing from God, and it was prophets, and it was different people that was coming to see him, and they saw him, and they glorified him, right? Then after that, he got like a little bit older, you know what I'm saying? And he went to the temple, you know what I'm saying, during Passover, and his parents left thinking that he was with them. And they found out they looking like, oh, he ain't even with us. He was back at the temple asking questions and and um and, uh answering questions to the teachers of the law. Right. So they was impressed. This is a 12-year-old boy. You know what I'm saying? He knew the scriptures, right? Knew it. You know what I'm saying? Back to front, knew that thing. You know what I'm saying? And talking to you, you know what I'm saying, talking to him, answering questions and asking questions. So he was impressive as a young boy. You know what I'm saying? Just a very young kid. So now what we're about to do is we're going we're gonna to get into John the Baptist now. Remember, John the Baptist is older than Yahushua. They're about the same age, right? They're only a couple months apart, but he's technically a couple months older. You know what I'm saying? But they're the same age. But John the Baptist is the one that's famous, right? Yahushua at this point, people know about him, and he's special, so people notice it. But John the Baptist is famous, right? Everybody knows who John the Baptist is. So let's go ahead and pick it up. Um, where we left off, this is uh, this is uh, uh, Matthew chapter 3, give me verse 1. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judah, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judah and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the so Pharisees... So hold on, who went out to him? This is how famous he was. Watch this. Watch it. Then, went out, then went out to him Jerusalem and all of Judah. So Jerusalem and all of Judah. Right. That means the whole nation was coming out to him. Everybody from everywhere in Judah, but especially Jerusalem was coming to him. So people would just go and he's out. He's not. It's, you think of like a church. Right. And you see all these churches right here. The churches are here to be convenient for the people that's in the neighborhood. So you want to go. You want to you want to get close. Got your darn nose, boy. You want to get close. <laughs> And you want to go over there, you want to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, that's just my church is just right around the corner. So you might go to church. You try to attract people that's close. You try to make it convenient for them. That's not what John the Baptist did. John the Baptist way out. 
You know what I'm saying? Way out. You know what I'm saying? And these people are leaving Judah and Jerusalem to get to where he is. Right? That's how famous he is. Everybody's just looking like, no, we got to go see John. Because John out there, he preaching, he teaching, he teaching the stuff. Right? Watch this. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Right? So now everybody coming out. And then you got the Pharisees and you got the Sadducees. What are you doing, boy? Grab the phone and fix it for him. This boy don't, they don't know what's wrong with him. Give her the phone. But uh, you, you got the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And we talked a little bit last week to give a little bit of context of how these two groups came into place to restore order. Remember, we had, we had, we had Gentiles that made sacrifices of pigs and put a statue of Zeus inside of our temple. So we had to cleanse out our temple, right? Because that stuff is completely abhorrent to the Most High God. We had to cleanse out our temple, and then we had to reestablish our priesthood. Remember, we had we had priests from tribes that wasn't even Levi, that they they forced their way, made a political move, and, 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 and joined up with the pressure of the Gentiles to say, you know what? We're the priests now, even though they wasn't Levites, right? Even though they wasn't sons of Aaron, more specifically. Right. But they wasn't even Levites. And then they made themselves priests. That's a completely against our law. So what the Sadducees and the Pharisees came in to do is to try to restore order and to make sure that we don't get influenced by these Gentiles and we don't lose our nation again because the Gentiles took us over at different times and forced us to do them different things. Right. They tried to keep us from keeping our Sabbaths. They tried to do a whole bunch of stuff to our people. So remember, our people right now are anxious. Right. Our people are in a place where it's like we don't feel security. We don't feel like. We feel like at any moment, what we have can be taken away again. It was just taken away with Babylon and we was underneath the Persians and underneath the Medes. And then the Greeks came and the Greeks was playing with us. They was aggressive with us. They wasn't allowing us to, to worship the way we wanted to worship. They was aggressive with us. And now we got the Romans and the Romans seem cool. So we looking like, OK, don't rock the boat too much. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees are there for. They have different perspectives, but that's kind of where they were birthed from. So now John the Baptist recognizes them. He calls them vipers. And he said, who warned y'all? So everybody coming out to hear, hear the word from John the Baptist, right? And when they come out, when he see them, watch what he say to them. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned thee, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He was like, man, y'all some snakes. Who told y'all to come here? Y'all trying to escape the wrath? Right. So what he's saying to y'all is like, y'all deserve the wrath. Right. I'm out here trying to teach people and trying to get them to repent. Oh, who told y'all to come? Right. That's how he greeted them. Like, yeah, who told y'all to come? Right. You might get the impression this is supposed to be for everybody. Right. But he's calling them out on the stuff that they do. He's like, man, who told y'all to come here? Right. Keep going. Watch this. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. Right. In other words, bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance means. Do something that's worthy to say that you actually change your life, right? Actually change your, your, your behavior, right? Have behavior that's appropriate to say that you repented is what he's telling. So he's like, man, don't come out here and just listen to me and just running your darn mouth. You got to actually do stuff. You got to actually change, right? Keep going. Watch this. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings forth, who, which brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Mm -hmm. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Uh -huh. but, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He said, I can't even do nothing with this man's shoes that's coming after me. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm hmm whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Yahushua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. And John, verses up. 13. Keep going. And John forbade him saying, I need to be baptized of thee and you come to me. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, suffer it to be so for now, for thus it becomes it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. 
And Yahushua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Right? So John the Baptist saw when he baptized Yahushua, you have to understand that it's not like it's not like he knows for sure that Yahushua is the one. Right? John the Baptist don't really know that. Grab uh grab John. This is John chapter 1. Give me verse 19. Right? John the Baptist doesn't really know for sure that Yahushua is the one. But he saw that dove come down. He saw the spirit rest on him like a dove. He was looking like, oh. You see what he said to him? He's like, man, I feel like you should be baptizing me. Because he's recognizing him at that point as the Messiah. Right? But I want y'all to understand, like, there's nothing, there's, there's nothing like, there's nothing that be, that's beyond doubt. Right? Everything can be argued. Right. You ever seen some. Hey, y'all just sit down. Just sit down and listen. That's all y'all got to do. Right. Y'all y'all ever seen something that's like you really believe it. But then somebody else look at it and be like, nah, but I feel like something else just happened. You know, what I'm saying? you've been watching a movie and it got like a plot twist and one person like, no, I'm telling you, so and so was doing this. This is what's about to happen in the movie. And they believe they like they think they know what's about to happen in the movie. But then somebody else like, no, nah, I don't know. I don't think he knew that happened. I don't know. But each one of them looking at it, they like, they convinced about what they seeing. Right? That's kind of how this is. It's like you see certain things and it's like, oh, I really believe it. But not everybody believe it. And that's how John the Baptist was. It's like, I think this is the Messiah. Like, you should be baptizing me. But he don't really know for sure. Just like at this time, he believe it. Y'all going to see later on that he going to be doubtful about like, man, are you really the one? You know what I'm saying? Is it really you? Or should I be waiting for another? Right? That's going to happen later on. But watch this. Keep going. This is uh, this is uh, first, uh, John. Not first John. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Right? So look, he was so famous that our people, we said, we send the priests and send the Levites to him. Because they know the law. Right? Go send the priests and the Levites to him and ask John, who are you? Because John was famous. Everybody going out to see John. So that's the, our people right now are looking for the Messiah. There would be no better time for the Messiah to show up for our people because we just got kicked out of our land by 400 some years ago, right? Then we get back into our land. And then once we get back into our land, we got Gentiles messing with us. We can't even get our temple rebuilt. They keep messing with us. It takes us 40 some years to build our temple, right? That's what we read in Ezra and Nehemiah. Then we try to get our, 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 our wall put together, right? Now our wall is finally put together. The Gentiles messing with us as we, as we putting that together. Then we got a little bit of peace. Then the Greeks take over a little bit later. And for 300 some years, the Greeks is bothering us and they messing with us and they they making sacrifices and disrespecting our beliefs and they don't care nothing about what we got going on. Then we finally get a little bit of relief. We fight some wars against them, get a little bit of relief. The Romans come in. But in our mind, all this can be taken away from us in a second. We need our king. They won't let us have a king. They put a king over us from Edom. They put an Edomite over us. Right? They put a, they put, they put, they put an Edomite over us. They made him the king of Judah. They call him the king of Judah. You know how disrespectful that is to us? So we looking like, no, no, no. We need the son of David. We need the prophesied king to come. This is supposed to go. Is it the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? Uh, that, that's just translation stuff. Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is the same thing. It's just a, it's just the way that the uh, translators put it. In, in old English, you would... You can use ghost to say spirit in old English. But when you read it in the King James, it'll say Holy Ghost. But it, it's, it's the, the Holy Ghost is a different way to just saying a set apart spirit. Right. So we looking at this stuff kind of play out before our eyes and we looking like we need the king, the king that y'all prophesied, 
that's going to come and he's going to take over everything and he's going to make all the Gentiles bow down to him and he's going to rule with an iron fist in Jerusalem. That's who we need. And that's what they waiting on. So they looking at John and they see all the people coming out to John. And so now they got to be sure because it's like all these people coming out to you now, John, you might rock the boat. We can't rock the boat too much because the Romans will come out and they take all this stuff away from us. So let me just make sure we understand what we're dealing with here. So they sent the Levites and the priest out, the sons of Aaron. They sent them out to go talk to John. Watch this. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. He said, I am not the Messiah. That's what they thinking he was. They looking like, are you, you, are you the one? You the Messiah? John said, I'm not the Messiah. What else he said? And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Right? They asked, what then? Are you Elijah? Why would they ask that? Because Malachi told us Elijah was coming back. That's right. Malachi said, look, remember, remember Moses. Right? He said, Elijah going to come and he going to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers and the fathers back to the children. Put the phone down. Right? Keep going. And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? Right. He said, are you that prophet? What is he talking about there? What Moses said in Deuteronomy. Moses prophesied in Deuteronomy chapter 18. He said, it, there will be a prophet just like me that's raised up amongst your brethren. Right. That's the person that y'all got to listen to. He said, it's going to be a prophet one day. So notice he, they didn't say, are you a prophet or are you the prophet? They said, are you that prophet? That specific prophet that Moses was talking about, right? What did he say after that? And he answered, no. Right? So he said, I am not the Messiah. I'm not Elijah, although he actually did come in the spirit of Elijah. But as far as he was concerned, he was looking like, I'm not Elijah, right? He didn't recognize himself as that. So he said, I'm not Elijah. And then he also said, I'm not that prophet, right? But watch this. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Watch what he say. That we may give an answer to them that sent us. Mm -hmm. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yahuwah, as said by the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why do you baptize then if you be not the Messiah, nor Elijah, neither that prophet? Mm -hmm. And John answered, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. Mm -hmm. These things were done in Beth Arba, Beth Arba, Beth Arbara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Yahushua coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Mm -hmm. And John bare record, saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Right. He said, look, I, he said, I bear record. I saw this for myself. The spirit descended like a dove, and it stayed on him. When he said abode on him, he said it sat there on his butt. Right. He said, man, I saw this with my own eyes. This is what John, he saw something special. So that's why John would say, oh, you the one. I believe it. You should be baptizing me. Right. Watch this. Keep going. And I knew him not, but that he sent me to baptize. He said, and I what? I knew him not. He said, but I didn't know him. Right. I didn't know him. Like, I didn't think that this was the Messiah. When I looked at him, it wasn't like I knew, like, oh, yeah, this is my cousin. You know what I'm saying? This is my man. No, he, I didn't know y'all sure. Right? They mamas knew each other. They mamas was people. But he's like, I did not know him. Right? Watch this. Keep going. The same said unto me, upon whom thou see, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the son of God. That's right. So now you see uh, uh, Sister Pamela, she asked, she was like, okay, so they at this point, they didn't know. 
that that prophet, right? The prophet that Moses talked about is Yahushua. No, right? We don't know nothing except uh, we got a whole bunch of prophecies. And maybe they all talk about the same person. Maybe it's multiple people. We don't really know. So they asked the question as if that prophet prophet is a different person from the Messiah because the, the scripture is not clear in saying that that prophet is going to be the same thing as the Messiah. We don't really know. So they they trying to fit. They just trying to figure it out. That's all in real time. And it's important that we understand that and appreciate that because that that gives context to why everybody behaves the way they behave in the, in the New Testament. Right. Nobody really knows for sure. Right. So John the Baptist don't know this man, but he had a vision that told him whoever the spirit rests on like a dove, that's him. So he had that vision. And then sure enough, he saw the spirit rest on this man like a dove. I don't even know who this. I don't know this man like that. I probably seen him around, but I don't know him like that. But after that, I'm a baptized. That's my guy. I baptize him. He's the one. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Yahshua as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Right? So after he was, after he started to believe, like, this is it. This the one. Now he telling everybody. Everybody, look. That's the Lamb. This whole time, I've been out here preaching and teaching y'all. That it's going to be somebody that come. I'm baptizing you with water. But this next boy that's coming, I ain't messing with him. That boy is way harder than I am. I can't even deal with this boy's shoes. When he come, he going to baptize with water and fire. John the Baptist don't even know how this going to play out. What do you think? John the Baptist walking around saying it's going to be somebody coming that he going to baptize with water and fire. And right now. The axe is at the stub. If you ain't producing good fruit, he pulling your butt up. What do you think he envisioning? He envisioning a warrior. Even John the Baptist. Everybody is envisioning what our law, I mean, what our, uh, what our uh, scripture prophesied. Our scripture prophesied to us a warrior was coming. Somebody who was going to rule all the nations. Somebody who was going to lead us just like Moses led us. Right? When Moses came up, Moses wasn't darn timid. Moses, look, Moses popped right up out of Egypt. First thing he did was looking like, hold on, Egyptian, don't be putting your hands on my people. Bow, killed him. Right? As soon as Moses popped out, he killed him. Stop putting your hands on my people. Then he saw two hard people fighting against each other. He was like, man, what y'all fighting for? Then they were looking like, no, nah, yeah, what you going to do? You going to kill us like you did that Egyptian? Moses was like, oh, y'all know, know about that? About that? You heard about that thing? Who would you have, eh? He was like, man, let me get up out of here then. Moses was on the run. You know what I'm saying? But then after that, you think Moses was scared? He walked right up to Pharaoh. Like, nah, you got to let the people go. All right, you don't want to do it? You have to do it with my God. Right? We get out of there, then we fight against the Malachites. We get done fighting with the Malachites. We go up against all. We go up against Sihon. We go up against Balak and the Midianites, right? We go up against uh, the Ammonites, the other Moabites, right? That's all, excuse me, that's all by the hand of Moses, right? Moses was a man of war. He was with the scraps. So when we look back at our history and we think about our Messiah and we think about that prophet that's going to be like Moses, well, guess what we're thinking? Man, we getting us a warrior, right? When when we when the prophecy tell us that it's gonna be of the branch of Jesse, the son of David. Well, we read about David. David was a man of war, right? David conquered the whole area around him. the Syrians, the, the the people of Damascus. He conquered the darn Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites. He had every one of them giving him tribute. The Philistines conquered him. They had a saying about David. How many did Saul kill? Saul killed thousands. How many did David kill? David killed 10,000. What you mean? That boy's a bad boy. Maybe with judges, though, when we would, our people would get us out of the thumb of these other nations. That boy, that boy, David, walked around. Everybody knew who David was. He was a man of war. He was known for winning wars and battles so when you tell me 
Or are we going to have a king like David, the son of David? What do you think we got in our mind? A warrior is supposed to be coming. All of us are looking for a warrior because our nation needs that right now. These Gentiles keep messing with us. We don't have no security. We need a king. How did we originally, before we got King Saul, why did we want a king? Because the nations were messing with us. The nations kept messing with us. Back and forth. Different judges had to be raised up. In the book of Judges, that would have, we had to raise up judges in different times. And we got enough of it. We said, listen, Samuel, we appreciate you and we appreciate what you do for us. But listen, make us a king like the rest of the nation. Because they don't be having the problems that we got. Well, now we back at it. We don't have a king. We just had different judges that was raised up, right? The Maccabees were like judges, right? Judah Maccabee, he was like a judge, right? He was like an avenger, right? Not the superheroes, but he was like somebody who could avenge things for us, right? So when the Greeks was fighting each other, right? You had the, the, North, the, Northern, uh, the Northern Greeks and the Southern Greeks, and they fighting each other. They meeting in our land to fight. So we kind of had to fight both sides and one side to take our back and the other side to take our back. But it's the north side that was really giving us problems. So Judah Maccabee, he has a fight. He was like a judge and he won. Right. But guess what? Right after that, the Romans come and they got us under. And then they place another king. They place a king over us, make him king of our land. And he's not even a person from Judah. And then that king, guess what he do? He go, he killed a whole bunch of babies in Judah trying to chase down the Messiah. Right? This is what we're dealing with. We are desperate for a Messiah. But people are desperate in different ways. You got the poor people and the unlearned people that are desperate for anybody who say they're the Messiah. Right? But then you have the leaders and the people and the scholars and the people who really know the scripture well. Right? They desperate for a Messiah too, but they need the warrior because they know how these things can go. So that's why they questioning John the Baptist. John the Baptist say, this is him. This guy, the Lamb of God, he's ready to get the war started. Watch this. And two of the disciples heard him speak and they followed Yahushua. Right? So two of John's disciples heard John say, that's him. That's the Lamb of God. Right. To his disciples said, oh, that's the one you've been talking about. Because Remember, his whole purpose is to is to pave the way. So everybody that follow John, which is everybody. Right. He has to get them to follow Yahushua. That's his job. So he's looking like that's him. I believe Yahushua. This guy right here. I believe he's the Messiah. Follow him. So two of his disciples heard him. He is like, oh, that's him. So they started to follow Yahushua instead. Right. Keep going. Then Yahshua turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to be interpreted master, where dwellest thou? Right? So they said, they looking like Yahshua, he, they start following. He was like, what you, what you trying to get? What you looking for? He said, what seek ye? What you looking for? Right? They looking like master. Where do you live? Right? That's all they had. Like, wherever you live, that's where we trying to go. So yeah, master, where do you live? Right? Watch this. Keep going. And he said unto them, come and see. Right? So he, look, he, he turned around. He see him falling. He's looking like, what you, what you looking for? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? He looking like, just master. Like, where do you live? They don't know this man, but they walk up to him and they call him master. Right? Master, where do you live? He looking like, hmm, come and see. You know what I'm saying? And he just kept, he's a, look, y'all got to look how smooth it's a bad boy, y'all sure was. Y'all saw how he talked to his mama last week. You know what I'm saying? His mama looking like, what in the world are you doing? We way out. We almost left your butt. Where was you at? He looking like, woman, don't you know I have to be about my father's work? She about pulled him by a darn ear. If you don't get your butt out this darn temple when we got to go, and what did butt do? All right, come on, let's go. Book said he respected that mama after that. His law. Right? He got to do it. But he, his mind, he's a different level of thinker. His mind is focused on doing what the father told him to do. That's it. His mind is single focus. 
I have a job to do. I can't afford no distraction. So when they walk up to him, he looking like, is y'all following me for the right reasons? What you here for? Master, you know what I'm saying? Is that another? All right, come and see then. You know what I'm saying? Follow me then. Come and see. All right, watch this. Keep going. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Right? He said, We found the Messiah. So now they're going around spreading like, yo, how do they know he the Messiah? Because he got a glow on him? Yeah, John the Baptist told him, who is John the Baptist? The man in Jew. The man. Like religiously, anybody who religion, anybody who believe the most high God, who want to understand the next thing that's coming, they go to the prophet John the, John the Baptist. He the man. Right? He is the man. John the Baptist said, this is the Messiah. So now people understand Yahushua to be the Messiah. Based off of John the Baptist's word, nobody else really know. Remember, everybody else that knew he was the Messiah, they died. Right? Remember, you asked Simeon that we read about last week. He was old. He let him see, like, this is him. Most high God told him that's the Messiah. But he was a baby. After that, Simeon died. You had Anna. Right? You had, you had uh, the wise men and you had the shepherds. Right? These are all older people. All of them are older people and Yahushua was a baby then. It ain't like we got social media. It ain't like we had, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, it ain't like you post this picture of the baby and every, every year you make a post talking about this is the Messiah that everybody in the world can just keep up with. No. It's a baby. Yeah, he the Messiah. He goes away. He goes home. It ain't like you following him home. Everybody go about their life, go about their business. Don't nobody know when the baby is seven years old. They don't know what he looked like when he's 13 years old. They don't know what he looked like. Then now he's 20. He don't know what he looked like. Now he about to be 30. Of course you don't know what this man looked like. You don't know nothing about this man. John the Baptist is, is, is like close to him in terms of family. And he don't know who he is. Right? It's a different. We think about it in our time today just because like we kind of. You kind of always have an opportunity to know who people are because you got social media. You see everybody's face. You can look it up. You ain't, you've never even met a person. The first thing you could do is say, what's his Instagram? What's her Instagram? And you can kind of figure out something about a person just from that. Right? But it's a different time. These are people that you don't have nothing. You just run around. You see a bunch of black folk. Looking like, I don't know. You got long hair like the other dude got long hair. I don't know who that is. I don't know who these people are. I ain't never met them. Right? Keep going, watch this. And he brought and he brought him to Yahshua, and Yahshua beheld him, and he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpret by interpretation a stone. Right? So he told him, he was like, You're gonna be a rock, you're gonna be a stone. Right? And you are a son of Jonah. Right? He called him a son of Jonah. Keep going, watch this. The day following, Yahushua will go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, follow me. Mm -hmm. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Yahushua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, can there anything, any good, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Right. So he's looking like, wait a minute. You think the prophecy is telling us about somebody from Nazareth? Right? Because Nazareth is up north. Right? And this is where the Gentiles are. Right? The Gentiles took over our land. So that Nazareth is up north. It's not in Jerusalem. All our prophecies in our mind tell us that the prophet, Bethlehem. that prophet, uh, the Messiah is going to come out of Judah. Specifically, Going to come out of Jerusalem, specifically mm -hmm. Bethlehem. Which he did. That is our mindset. Yahushua, don't nobody know that he was born in Bethlehem. Why? Because there ain't no social media. 
<laughs> Ain't nobody posted when he was born. Like, hey, here he is. Location, Bethlehem. You know, they, you know how they get them. They do the post now. They put the location, Bethlehem. Photo credit, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? You know how you get, how you do the photo credit? You do the emoji of the little camera, right? Do the little emoji of the camera, and then you put the person next to it who took the, the shot. They don't have that. It wasn't nobody to, nobody to take the camera shot. Wasn't no camera to take it with. And there wasn't no social media to post it to. So now at this point, this is a baby born in Bethlehem that went right back up to Galilee. Went Bethlehem, solid. If he came out of Bethlehem, everybody would be like, that might be the one. You know what I'm saying? If everybody knew he came from Bethlehem, they might look at him and be like, that might. Now you could clear this whole thing up. If he pop out and be like, yo, everybody. I was born in Bethlehem. I close check, this case right check now. the records. I close this case right now. <laughs> check the records, right? Everybody be like, oh, okay, for sure, he might be the one. That would seal the deal. Y'all on purpose didn't have y'all she would do that. Right? He went to Bethlehem and then as a baby left Bethlehem, went into Egypt, then from Egypt went into Galilee. And that's where he is now. That's where he grew up. Everybody who know him are the nobodies. They the people that 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 live outside of the land. Country, they live outside of Judah. Country for rule. They country. Rule. They 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 mixed in with all these Gentiles. In the sticks, right? They ain't got no respect out there. So that's how Nathaniel is thinking. He looking like Bethlehem. I mean, uh, uh, Nazareth from Nazareth up north. Yuck. That's nasty. Like, who was? Can anything? He asked the question Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Read that part again. Watch this. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? All right, watch this. This is 2 Kings. This is 2 Kings chapter 15. All right? Because Nazareth is in a, in a uh, place y'all saw, y'all just heard him when he read it. Uh, they in Galilee, right? So Nazareth is a part of Galilee, right? Galilee is a is a is an area. You know what I'm saying? So think of Galilee as being like a county, and Nazareth is like a a city. This boy from Galilee County. You know what I'm saying? He looking like man, no nothing good come up there. That's right. So Sharon said, if only he could pull out his birth certificate. You know what I'm saying? He could have saw that case immediately. Like, look, birth certificate, Bethlehem. Boy, you know where I am? Everybody be like, all right, for sure. You might, you know what I'm saying? You might be, you know what I'm saying? You might be somebody. But no, nah, he parading himself around like he from Galilee. All right? This is uh this is 2 Kings. Give me chapter 15, verse 27. Watch what it say. This is just for context. This is the king. This is the uh, king of Assyria who removed our people from our land. Right. So he removed the northern tribe from the land. Right. And pushed them to a different place. And then he put Gentiles in our place. But watch where he did this. In the two and 15th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Rimliah, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 20 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahuwah. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came tiglath Pileser, king, king of Assyria, and took Ion and Abel-Beth. Watch this. Abel-Beth Makkah and jo Genoa. And what else? And Kadesh and Hazor and Gilead and Galilee. And what? And Galilee. So he also took Galilee. And what did he do? And all the land of Naphtali and carried them away captive to Assyria. So he, he took... Galilee, and he took all the land of who? Naphtali. All the land of Naphtali, and he carried them away to Assyria. Mm -hmm. Then after he did that, he took people from all the different territories of Assyria, a bunch of Gentiles, and he made them live in Galilee, in all the land of Naphtali. Right? So when, when Nathaniel was thinking about this, he looking like, man, it's a bunch of, it's still to this day, a bunch of, not, well, yeah, literally to this day. You know what I'm saying? It's still a bunch of Gentiles in that land. So Nathaniel looking at it like, 
does anything come from Galilee? Specifically Nazareth, but Galilee all together, like, do anything come from there? Well, God covered himself and did, and Isaiah did say, people of Naphtali saw a great light. Oh, let's get it. It's Isaiah chapter 9. It's Isaiah chapter 9. The, oh, wow. brother, the brother's showing y'all something, right? It's Isaiah chapter 9. This is why it's important. You can't let no, no word slip out of this book if you're trying to predict prophecy. These people out here trying to call themselves predict. No, see, uh, I think I think Yahushua coming back in the next three years. Okay, for sure. Run your darn mouth if you want to. The problem is y'all don't know the scripture well enough. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know the scripture well enough to tell you what year he's going to come back, especially not when the man say you ain't going to know the day or the hour. <laughs> that don't make sense for me to sit here and pretend like I know. Right? He brother come back, yeah, but he didn't say nothing about the year. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? Right out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do. All right. This is uh, this is uh, Isaiah chapter 9. Give me verse 1. Watch the book say. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. The land of who? Naphtali. Ain't that the land that that the king of Assyria just took and he put a bunch of Gentiles there? Ain't that the land that Galilee is a part of? So think of Naphtali as like a state. Galilee is like a county, right? Nazareth is in Galilee County, right? That's the best way to kind of look at it, right? He took the whole state of Naphtali. Right? Well, here it's saying, say it, read it again. What'd you say? Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, mm -hmm. and afterward did more grievously afflict her, by, afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. Mm -hmm. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people that walked in darkness, right? That's why Nathaniel, you looking like, dude, anything good come out of that dark place? You know what I'm saying? Nazareth? That's in Galilee? You know what I'm saying? That used to be the old land of Naphtali? Yeah. Do anything good come out of there? He looking like, it's darkness over there. And the scripture is telling us the people that once walked in darkness did what? Have seen a great light. They have seen a great light. What else? They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. Mm -hmm. Thou has multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. The joy before thee, according to the joy in harvest, and the men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Watch this. For thou has broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Mm -hmm. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Mm -hmm. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born. Watch this. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a son is given. What about this son? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Oh, he gonna rule some stuff. They said the whole government gonna sit on this boy's shoulder. What and else? And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His name shall be called... A wonderful counselor, the mighty God. This is a son, by the way, that we're talking about, right? A son is going to be called the mighty God. What else? The everlasting father. He's going to be called the everlasting father. I don't know how these people come up in their mind that Yahushua ain't God. Because this man is going to be called the son. It's going to be called how I don't even know. They, you know, they, the, 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 the people that don't believe that Yahushua is the Messiah, they'll talk to you. So you mean to tell me that? Yahushua was just praying to himself. Oh, yeah, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, actually, I don't know. It sounds kind of funny, but yeah, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Father, although I'm the son, please bless me so I can bless myself. And they make jokes like that. I'd be like, no, it's funny. It is. I agree. It's funny. But now, let's deal with scripture. You know what I'm saying? After you get done making jokes, now let's deal with scripture. Why is the son called the everlasting? Read it again. For unto us a child is born. Uh huh. Unto us a son is given. A son is given. And what are we going to call him? And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So why is the son called the Everlasting Father? 
I don't know. I mean, I just can't. I that I can't figure out for myself. Why in the world we know that who the everlasting father is? It only one everlasting father. There ain't a whole bunch of everlasting. There's only one father that lives forever, right? Why in the world would the son be called the everlasting father? That just doesn't make sense. Unless y'all she was praying to herself. You know what I'm saying? Make your jokes. Everybody make your jokes. But as soon as you get done joking, we got to deal with the scripture. Right? Keep going. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. It shall never end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will perform this. If we were paying it, listen, there is not one prophet or Levite or priest that is not aware of that prophecy. The part that we missed is that this man is going to be a light in Naphtali. Galilee. In Galilee, so. he is going to be a, a light. If we caught that part, right? If we connected those two pieces, then it would be clear. They would be able to say it. But remember, when King Herod asked, hey, what city is the Messiah going to be born? They came back and they told him, they was like, oh, Bethlehem. They was right. Right? And now, when we looking and we trying to figure it out, Nathaniel is looking like, do anything good come from Nazareth? Only because he wasn't familiar with this piece. But it's these type of intricate details that are required when it's talk about prophecy. Remember, prophecy is not even designed for the average person to get it. Right? It's not designed for us to predict stuff. Remember, prophecy is only here for God's glory. It's for him to leave a little breadcrumb so after it happened, we could say, dang, he said that was going to happen. The man is always right. He know the end from the beginning. At the very beginning, he know how it's going to end. That's what prophecy is for. It's for us to give glory to him, for him to have proof that I know how this thing is about to play out. Right? We try to use, that's our pride when we try to use it to predict stuff and say, oh man, listen, I know how it's going to play out because I know the scripture so well. This that, nah, man, that's a your, that's your pride. I'm guilty of it too. I like to I like to try to imagine how that thing gonna come out, right? But you gotta humble yourself and be like, man, that thing can play out however it won't. You could be dead darn wrong. You get too invested in the one darn theory, and then you miss the whole boat. Right? Keep the law so you can be great in the kingdom. Overall, keep the commandments of the Messiah so you could at least make it in the darn kingdom. You do that, you know what I'm saying? You'll be solid. The rest of it, just let it darn, let it darn flow. All right, keep going. You in Isaiah? What verse? We on verse eight now. Uh, we can we can go back. Go to uh, this is John. Where we leave off? Uh, John one forty six. This is John chapter one verse forty six. Watch the book say. Right, Nathaniel looking like do anything good come out of the county of galilee out of nazareth city that don't make no darn sense right watch this and nathaniel said unto him can anything good come out of nazareth and philip said unto him come and see right bill was like listen man, i don't know i don't know i ain't that good with the scripture bro but listen just come check him out john the baptist said that was him you know they just come and see right watch this and y'all sure saw nathaniel coming to him and said unto him behold an israelite indeed in whom is no guy in other words he a straight shooter that's why Nathaniel was looking like, bro, are you sure? You know what I'm saying? Don't nothing come out of Nazareth. Y'all sure saw him like, that's a straight shooter there. You know what I'm saying? That boy don't be lying. That boy going to tell you like it is. Right? Watch this. And Nathaniel said unto him, whence knowest thou me? Right? Nathaniel like, how you know me? Watch what y'all sure say to him. And y'all sure answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, when you were under the fig tree, I saw thee. And Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Master, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Right? So immediately, Nathaniel, was, he was sold. He was like, how you know I was under the fig tree? Don't nobody know I was under, I was under the fig tree by myself. Don't nobody know I was under that fig tree. How in the world you know I was under the fig tree? So now you got a group of people already saying this is the Messiah. 
right? Then you got your man who come in like, yo, yo, no, look, I don't know, bro, but just come, let's go see, right? Steve looking like, man, what's all the hoopla about? He already establishing a crowd. You got people that sitting there like, this the Messiah, this the Messiah. Then all of a sudden, he calls something out. You've never met this man. You've never even seen this guy before. Then he called out something about you that nobody else know. Nah, I, I saw you, you know what I'm saying, under the fig tree. And you don't be lying. It's like, well, everybody know I don't be lying, but I ain't was under the fig tree. You know what? You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Right? Keep going. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, because I said to thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believer style. Right? He said, oh, you believe me too because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? Well, that's light work. Watch what Yahushua said. Thou shalt see greater things than these. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. Hereafter you shall see heaven open up and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Right? And where do we get that from? Jacob. We got that from Jacob. Right? So it's important when Yahushua is speaking, he's tying in scripture. He's trying to let us know this is what these scriptures was talking about. He's saying you're going to see angel. I mean, you're going to see. Read it again for me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So heaven going to open and then the angels are going to go up and down on the Son of Man. Right? The Son of Man is going to be the reason that the angels is able to go up and down is what he's saying. Right? Now let's read what, what uh, one of our fathers said, saw. Jacob. This is uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 28, give me verse 10. This is Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Uh-huh. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached, uh, reached to heaven. Right. So he dreamt of a ladder and this ladder was on top of the ground and it reached all the way up to the sky. Right. And then what happened? And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. So there was a ladder. And he envisioned angels going up and down this ladder. So what is Yahushua telling you? The ladder. Yahushua was like, that ladder he saw, that was me. Right? Now, he's not saying that flat out to nobody. The only thing he did is he said, oh, you're going to see greater things. You're going to see the angels going up and down on the Son of Man. Right? That's how it's going to play out. It's how he, that's what he's telling us. By doing that, anybody who's familiar with this scripture, they would tie it together and be like, that's like what Jacob saw. Jacob saw a ladder. You trying to say you was the ladder that Jacob saw? The bad boy, right? He's going to be doing this throughout all the gospel that we read. We're going to try to point out a lot of them, right? Keep going. This is uh, going back to, uh, to uh, oh, we, we finished uh, chapter one, huh? Uh, yeah. Let's go to chapter 2 then. This is John chapter 2, verse 1. John chapter 2, verse 1. So now he's starting, to, he's starting to pick up disciples, right? But why is he getting disciples? How did this? Y'all should have been around this whole time. Why now is he getting disciples? John the Baptist's work is... John the in. Baptist, right? It's important that we realize that because... If we if we really latch on to how Yahushua's ministry is developing, it makes sense. It makes sense why some people is like, what? And other people are like, no. Right? Where is where is uh Yahushua right now? He's in Galilee. He's in Galilee. He's not in Judah. The people that know the scripture came from where? Judah. Bethlehem. Jerusalem. The people that know, the people that understand. Jerusalem. They coming from Jerusalem, right? The people that sent the priests and the Levites, they sent them from Jerusalem to go talk to John. Like, John, are you the one? 
The people who got the power, the authority, the influence, they all are in Jerusalem. Yahushua is in the slums. He in the hood. Don't, don't nothing good come from where Yahushua is. Right? But guess what? He's developing a following. But where is that following from? A place of no notoriety. He coming from the hood where don't nobody care nothing about what you're talking about. Them boys ain't smart. They don't know the scripture like that. They ain't got no money. He coming from the hood, from the slums. Right? And he developing a, a following from people that people look at like, mm, they ain't nobody. They ain't got no value. They ain't got no notoriety. Right? You have to understand how this thing is being put together. Right? So y'all sure he developing people starting to mess with him, but they ain't the people that got the influence. Right? Let's look at uh, John chapter 2. In the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Yahushua was there. So where are they at still? Galilee. Still in Galilee, right? I might, I might want to pull up a map so y'all can see it. You know what I'm saying? Let me see here. I'm going to pull up a map so y'all can see. How you close this? Mm. All right, so <clears throat> this went to it up here. You know what I'm saying? So this down here, Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? Jerusalem. Not in real life. In real life, Jerusalem probably further south. But you know what I'm saying? Right now, this is what they call Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? He's up here. He's up in those areas. So as long as he's up top, he ain't getting no respect. He, people don't care nothing about what's going on up there. You know what I'm saying? So he's in Cana now of Galilee. Still in Galilee. Still up top. Still up north. Keep going. And both of Yahshua was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahshua said unto him, they have no wine. All right. So y'all didn't heard that Yahshua turned water into wine, right? Here you go. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's read about the story. This is how it actually happened. Yahshua said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Right. right so this hour, again, he talked to a mama. He's focused. He's looking like, what did it? What? I'm not here to make darn wine. What are you talking to me about wine for? I'm here to do the father's business. But guess what? That's his mama. So he's saying, woman, what, did, what do I have to do with this? Right? His mama say, watch what the mama say. My hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servant, whosoever he saith, unto, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Right? She know. She look, I ain't listening to him. That boy go do it. Uh, she Whatever he tell you to do, do it. I'm busy. I got to get this done. Right? She ain't even, she ain't even paying no attention to y'all. Sure. Y'all sure looking like, what do I, what do I have to, this stuff ain't got nothing to do with me. This, my time ain't here yet. It ain't my time yet. He looking like, okay, um, boy, whatever he tell you to do, make sure you get it done. Because she already know her son. She's like, I know he going to do it. The boy going to do whatever I tell him to do. Right? But he's so focused, but he know, he also got to keep the law. He got to honor his mama. Right? So he's in there. All right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So watch what he said. And there were set set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. And the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto them, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then which is worse. But when, have, when, men, when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Mm -hmm. This beginning of miracles did Yahshua in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. 
After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. Right. So Yahushua ended up turning the water into wine. And when the people drank the wine, they look like, boy, this ain't what usually people, what they usually do is they give you the good wine up front. Then they start giving you the watered down stuff later. It's looking like y'all did the opposite. Y'all gave us some wine. It was all right. But this wine y'all giving us at the end, this is the stuff. So whatever wine he made, it was of good quality to the people that were drinking it. Right? And they was loving what was going on. They had a good time. And his disciples saw that. And the disciples was looking like, it's a bad boy. Because it's the first time they saw like a they saw him actually do a miracle. Right? So they looking like. So they believed after that. Right? Then they went down to Capernaum. Right? Still up north. All this is still up north. Right? Keep going. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. Right? So then from Capernaum, then they went to Jerusalem. So now they're starting to go south. Right? So here, let me see if I can get us. Get us a better view. There we go. Right? So, boom, this is Nazareth. This is Cana of Galilee, right? So, we here, right? Cana of Galilee. Then you got Capernaum over here, right? So, all this is up north, right? Jerusalem down here, way down here, right? This is all area of Judah down here, right? So, they going, they, they way, they way down here. He went to uh, Capernaum. And then shot down to Jerusalem for the Passover. So now let's read. And found in the temples those that, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves. Right? So look, he come to the temple and they up front in the temple and they selling what? Oxen, sheep and doves. Sheep and doves. Why would they be selling oxen, sheep and doves? For the Passover. Why would they be selling oxen, sheep and doves? Get your, get your, get your Passover. Get your Passover. Passover? Get your Let's see. If you can't get a sheep, grab a, grab a Numbers chapter twenty-eight. This is Numbers chapter twenty-eight. Start me off at verse one. I think it's twenty. Maybe I want twenty-seven. Right, so Sharon said she said the sacrifices. Right? It's Numbers chapter uh twenty, I think it's twenty-eight. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel to say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savor unto me shall you observe to offer unto me in their due seasons. And you shall say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which you shall offer unto Yahuwah, two lambs of the first year without spot. Day by day for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even. And the tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. Right? So every day the priest got a sacrifice. Uh, what was it, a lamb? Uh, you show says you know, you show two lambs of the first year without spot. Yeah, so you got to sacrifice a lamb in the morning and a lamb in the evening. You got to do two lambs every single day. Every single day that got to happen. Then watch what he say next. And the drink offering thereof shall be a fourth part of a hen for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured into unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening and the meat offering of the morning. And as the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenths deals of fly, fine flour. I mean, two tenths deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. All right. So now every single day you got to offer one lamb in the morning and one in the evening. But if it's the Sabbath, on top of those two, that one in the morning, one in the evening, 
you got to do two more. Right? So every Sabbath is four lambs that you sacrifice. It, right? This is coming from the priest. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And in the beginnings of your months, you shall offer a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot. Two Three young what? Bullocks. Keep going. And three tenths deals of fine flour. I mean, three tenths deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil. For one bullock and two tenths deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram. And a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb. For a burnt offering of sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And their drink offering shall be half a hen of wine unto a bullock. And a third part of a hen unto a ram. And a fourth part of a hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering every month without throughout the months of the year. So every first of the month, <coughs> right? Bless you. Every first of the month, you got to make a sacrifice of the bullet, of the ram, and of the lamb. On top of the, the, the two lambs every day. And if it happened to fall on the Sabbath, then you got to also off offer the two lambs, the two additional lambs. Right? This is what you got to do every single month. Let's keep going. And in the 14th day of the first month of the pa is the Passover to Yahuwah. Is the what? Passover to Yahuwah. Why did Yahushua go down to, to uh, Jerusalem? Because three times a year, you got to go down to Jerusalem. Every male Passover is one of them times. He went down for Passover. It was according to our law. He had to go down for Passover. So look what we need to sacrifice for the Passover. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. And the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no manner of servile work therein. But you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks, and one ram, even seven lambs of the first year. They shall be so unto two you without two young bullocks. what? Bullocks. Two young bullocks. That's an ox. That's the ox that they sell. Right? Keep going. What else? And seven ram lambs of the first year. Mm-hmm. And, and they shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be a, a flour mingled with oil. Three-tenths deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two-tenths deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shall thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs. All right. Now let's go back. So Passover coming seven days. If we kept going, it's going to tell you every single day. Seven days. We got to make sacrifices. The people have to make sacrifices. It's commanded by our law. Right. So seven days. The people got to make sacrifices for uh, during this time. Everybody traveling from all over the place. You think everybody brought all the animals? Oh, so now they up front in front of the temple where you have to make the sacrifice. And they saying, listen, yo, 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 you need an ox. You got all your, you know, we got to do sacrifice. You got an ox. You need an ox. Got an ox. You know what I'm saying? Young bullock. Here we go. You want a young one here? Young bullock, according to the law. Making a killing. What you need? A sheep? A sheep? You know, same thing as a ram. You know what I'm saying? Good. Okay. Get you. Here you go. A ram. There you go. Get, get you one. You know, sheep and a ram. That's the same family. Right? What you need? What you need? Oh, you got. You need the dove because you can't afford it. You can't afford it. I'll tell you what. Here, take this. Go ahead, take a dove. Just in case you sin out here, you know what I'm saying? You need go ahead, take a dove. There you go. Right? All the people gonna be in town, they making merchandise of the people. Right? They got they they serving the need in their mind. People didn't bring all their stuff. They ain't got it. I'll give you a good price. You know what I'm saying? Let's see how y'all should handle that. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Yahshua went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting. And when he had and changers made, of money too, it's like it looked like, oh, what you got? You, oh, you ain't got the Roman coin. I was like, no, I'll take that. I'll take that. Let me switch that up for you. Don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Go. Ahead. It's like an ATM. You know what I'm saying? You ever go somewhere? It's like, no, we only take cash. Like, dang, you only take cash. I only got my car. What they say to you? Not ATM. You can go across the way. You got an ATM right over there. Across the way is they man. See what I'm saying? Across the way is they man. So you go over there. That's what the money changer was. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to buy an ox. But you know, I'm, I only got credit. You know what I'm saying? I only got credit. I'm trying to buy an ox. He looking like, you got to go to my man's over there. He got the ATM. You go over to the money changer. He switch you out for the proper currency. You take it back and you go buy your ox. Y'all sure watching. He walking up. He watching this thing. He looking like, this stuff is. Watch what he say. Yeah, I'm sure I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Watch what he do. 
Re yeah. Remember, you don't know who this man is. Oh, y'all, I want y'all to understand. You don't know who this man is. This man's a nobody. Don't nobody walk up to our temple flipping nothing over. That's crazy. Who do you think you are? Walk up to the temple disrupting anything. This is what we do every single year. Don't nobody got a problem with what we're doing. The Pharisees and the Sadducees run the joint and they never express a problem with what we're doing. Right. And then you get this guy who I don't know from what. And the boy coming. I heard he coming from up north. Are you kidding me? Watch what this boy do. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes of money and overthrew the tables. Right. So look. He made a scourge of small cords. So in other words, like a whip. He took like a yeah. It's like I wish I could show y'all. He it's like taking an extension cord. You got a long extension cord, and then you fold. Your mama ever took the extension cord and then fold it? I know none of y'all mamas have. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like you know what I'm saying? Like the old school mamas, they take the extension cord right and then fold it once, and then it's like long still. So it's like oh, that's too long. So she folded it again, but it's still pretty long because it's a long extension cord. So then she fold it one more time and then she hold it up and it's like, it looked like, it looked like a bouquet of flowers, except it's an extension cord flower. You know what I'm saying? And then when she hit it, hit you with it, it leave welts all through your back. You just, why, why? It's like getting hit with several skinny belts all at one. Yeah, 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 yeah. All at one time. So that's what, a, that's what he did. He made a scourge of small cords. That's pretty much what he did. And then he was going around. And he was wiping that thing at people. And people were looking like, man, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? So they getting out of Dodge. Then when he get them out of there, he's like, get your butt back. What did y'all do? Get your butt hitting them with this stuff. So everybody running away like, this man is darn crazy. Now that he did that, he, they left the money there. Because he's he smacking at them. They looking like, whoa, what's going on, bro? You know what I'm saying? So they left the money there. So he just turned the money over and poured the money all out. They looking like, bro, is you out of your darn mind? Then... He turned, he, he had the tables there with you. He flipped the tables over. You know what I'm saying? Watch what happened. And he overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples. Do that somewhere else. What's wrong with y'all? Find somewhere else to make some money. Find somewhere else to do the stuff y'all trying to do. Not. Here, don't nobody know who this is. Y'all have to understand how crazy this is. Nobody even knows who this guy is. I've never heard of you. What gives you the authority to think you can do? Are you a priest? Are you a Levite? Are you a Pharisee? Are you a Sadducee? Do you work with Herod, King Herod? What in the world? Where do you get your authority from to think you can come around here knocking over table, pouring out money, and slapping people with whips? But he spoke with so much confidence. And he said, my father. These people looking at him like. I got the mind to knock you out right now, but. Did I? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Watch what happened. And his disciples remembered that it was written. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him. What sign showest thou unto us? Seeing that thou doest these things. Right? So they looking like. Oh, you think you somebody, right? So they're looking like, okay, well, show us a sign. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to understand, we like this type of stuff. We like like a powerful dude to come in and shake some stuff up. So on one hand, we look like you got us messed up. But on the other hand, we looking like, you the Messiah? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> is you, I'm telling right now, we desperate for the Messiah. Everybody wants the Messiah. Now, some people that's looking like, no, he has to be this sign away because we can't risk rocking the boat too much. The Romans will get rid of us. And it's another group that don't care. Just like they don't even know enough to, to even care, which is the people in Capernaum, the people with generally the people Capernaum, people up north. They looking like we don't even get anybody could be the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? Just like show us something cool. You know what I'm saying? But then you got this other group of people that's like, well, no, we know the scriptures and the Messiah must come from Bethlehem. You have to check all the boxes, right? So you got the people who think they know and the people who know they don't know. You know what I'm saying? They know they don't know. They don't even care. Just show me something nice. You know what I'm saying? Do something for me. I don't get desperate, right? But everybody's desperate. So when they see this, although it's in their right mind, 
to just steal off on y'all, sure. They looking like, are you the Messiah? Show me a sign. Show me something. You know what I'm saying? Show me something. Watch what he say. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty-six years was this temple in building, and will you rear it up in three days? Right? He said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. So they looking like, You think that you going they they look taking what he's saying, they looking like, okay, what you trying to tell me is it took us 40, 43 or 46. 46. It took us 46 years to build this. Y'all remember that, right? We just read it. When at the beginning of Ezra, you remember, excuse me, Zerubbabel and Joshua came and they laid the foundation, right? Then after they laid the foundation, what happened? He said, stop. Gentiles came. You know what I'm saying? We ready to, we ready to build. Gentiles came messing with us. Like, yeah, let us help out. We told they, but. And uh, you ain't got no part in what we doing. Go on, you know what I'm saying? Go run along. Why don't you take your butt up back to Galilee? You know what I'm saying? Take your butt up back to Capernaum. You know what I'm saying? To Canaan. Because that's where the Gentiles be. Right? I just want y'all to understand where these mindsets come from. It's the same mindset that we have when we are building our foundation. Them Gentiles came from up north. And they look, no, nah, why don't you go on? No, nah, we don't, we don't, no. Nah. We, we got this. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's our temple is our God. We got it. Then the Gentiles went and told the king. Then the king said, y'all stop building. That's why it took so long. Then we start building again, right? And then guess what happened again? The Gentiles came back and we had to pause while we talked to another king. Then the other king was like, no, nah, I got y'all back. Y'all go ahead and do it. And then we was able to finish it. But that whole time span was 46 years. 46 years passed by, right? And so now they looking at, they know our history. They looking at y'all, sure, they looking like, okay. Let me get this straight. I asked you for a sign. You tell me that your sign is that you going to somehow the temple going to be destroyed. That's crazy. First of all, like you're, you sound nuts. Right. But OK, let's take what you're saying. Somehow the temple going to be destroyed. But you think you going to rebuild it in three days? Something that took us 46 years to build. You think three days you I ain't never even seen you never heard of you going to build it in three days. Right. That's how you're looking at it. They don't know what he's talking about, though. Watch this. Keep reading. But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Yahushua had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name. Right? So when he's there, people start messing with him. Because you have to think about it, right? Who's in Jerusalem right now? Well, the top dog. Everybody. Right? So it's a bunch of people from Capernaum there. It's a bunch of people from Cana that, that saw him turn water into wine. It's a bunch of people that grew up with him who they always kind of knew this is a spell. I don't know he's the Messiah, but I know he's special. Right? Remember we read the grace, the grace of God was on him. So we know this like everything just kind of work out for the boy. We know he's sharp. We know he know the scriptures. Right, so it's just we know he's special, and now John the Baptist, the people up north know John the Baptist said he the one. So now these same people from his hometown are also in Jerusalem, and guess what they saying? He the Messiah, for real? He the Messiah? And he's spreading the word. So now people see him flip over some tables and talking to the talking to the the the, the elders like that. They looking at him like, oh, maybe he really is the one. That boy talked with some authority, right? Maybe he really is the one. So people are starting to believe that he's the Messiah, right? Keep going. Watch this. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Mm -hmm. But Yahshua did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it in the chapter. Yeah. So we're going we gonna to stop there. There's a lot more to get to. I want to get into three because then you're going to see Nicodemus, right? But we're going we gonna, to we gonna get into three next week, right? But you can see he's starting to do miracles around the people. People are looking at They're hearing about him. 
right? And then they see it. So his crowd is growing. So he got legitimacy from John the Baptist. For anybody who was around when John the Baptist was like, yo, that's him. The people that was around, they also tell another people. You saw what you saw what Philip was doing. You saw Nathaniel, how he got pulled in, how, how Simon got pulled in. Everybody getting pulled in because people are like, it's word of mouth. They're looking like, no, I think we found him. Fire. That's, you know I'm saying, follow me. Let me let me take you to him. Right? That's that's still happening, right? So now they in Passover and that's happening. But now you got more people. You got people in Cana that saw him turn water into wine. Now they telling people like, no, nah, man, I'm telling this dude different. I saw him turn water into wine. I think he the Messiah. No, nah, my boy said that John the Baptist pointed to him and said, so all this stuff is starting to spread. Word of mouth. It ain't no social media, so it ain't spreading like wildfire crazy, but it's spreading. Now you got everybody in one city and he make a spectacle turning over the table, doing all this extra stuff. Who in the world is that? That's the dude that John the Baptist, I heard John the Baptist said, he's the Lamb of God, that's the Messiah. Yeah, no, some dude, what was the dude, the dude name? Uh, uh, what was his name? Ezekiel. Ezekiel was telling me that he turned water into wine, bro. Out there, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere in Galilee or something, I don't know, I don't, it don't matter where he did it, he did it though. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say. Right? They look like, do you see how he's talking to these boys? Don't nobody talk to them like that. So now the word is starting to spread. Then the man start doing more miracles. So now they see in the miracles, they looking like, that's him. You know what I'm saying? That is him. So more and more people are just believing and believing and believing and believing. But then there's a lot of people that's sitting there like, he from where now? Galilee? That's cool. Ain't no Messiah supposed to be coming from Galilee. That's their mindset. So they struggling with this thing. Like some people believe them, but it's like the stupid people would believe them. Right? The people that we would consider sheep. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how like every year something pop up. Like it's a, uh, no offense to my brothers, but you know what I'm saying? A couple years ago, everybody was doing Forex. They're like, no, this is how you get money. You know what I'm saying? Just invest in foreign exchange. It's that another. And they doing that, that, and they begging everybody online to do it. It is like that thing fizzle out and don't nobody do nothing. Right? Then the next hustle come up. Like, yeah, just play, uh, what was it called? Squares or whatever it was, where it's like, you cash out me a dollar, I cash out you a dollar, everybody cash out everybody some money, and somehow somebody's supposed to get rich off of that stupid stuff. Everybody was doing it. Right? And then it fizzle out. Then it's like, oh, okay, I got this other hustle, I can do this. Then it fizzle out. And I got the, so a lot of times we look at the people that fall for all them things, and we be looking at them like you you fall for one, that's everybody can fall for one pyramid scheme. One pyramid, the one little thing that I fell for a pyramid scheme before, and I know I ain't dumb. You know what I'm saying? So that's normal, right? But you fall for all of them. Like every time they come around, you fall for them. You look at them a little different. You look at them like, man, I can't trust what you fall. You fall for anything. You might believe anything. Well, the people that might believe anything are the ones that believe in the Messiah. The stupid the people that 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 people would consider consider stupid, unwise, foolish, reckless with their choices, right? Those are the ones that wholeheartedly believe Yahushua Messiah. So the people that see themselves as smart and wise and understanding, how you think they look at this? Like, man, if all them believe in him, <laughs> trust me, that ain't the one. Trust me. <laughs> them boys ain't right about nothing. You know what I'm saying? That ain't the one. So that's the dilemma that everybody is finding themselves in. Right. And that's what kind of we're going to explore. You know what I'm saying? For the rest of the gospel. You know what I'm saying? But this is the beginning. This is where Yahushua kind of, he kind of, he kind of getting it started. Right. He go to Jerusalem first and then he kind of going to get it started. After this, we're going to read next week how after leaving Jerusalem, he go right back up north. Right. Go right back up north. And that's when it become official after that. You know what I'm saying? I say right now he kind of getting it started, but it become official after you go back up north. All right. Any questions? Any questions online? What did his mom find out? When did his mom find out? He was the Messiah. I noticed she began to follow him as well. Uh, we read that last week. So last week, remember the angel? The angel showed up to to Mary, and and told her. He said, "You know what I'm saying." She so the she found out right away. She knew from the beginning, 
right? The angel told her that she's going to be having the Messiah. It's going to be the son of the Most High God. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be special. He's going he gonna to save the people, right? So she knew she knew from the very beginning. But you, if you remember from last week, the book kept on saying that she kept these things in her heart, right? So, so it wasn't like she was walking around saying, hey, my son is the Messiah. She kept it. She just looking back, just proud, like, that's a bad boy I got, right? And you could tell she was proud. That's why, you know what I'm saying, when it came to making the water and the wine, she looking like, go ahead, you know what I mean? Show these people who you are, right? That's pretty much what she was saying. She was like, show these people who you are. Time. Show and he's telling her, it's not my time yet. Like, it's not time yet. I'm like, boy, uh, whatever you say, just do it. I got stuff. I ain't got time. Right? Then he went ahead and did what his mama said. All right. Any other questions? It's all right. It's a lot to remember. It's good. Good. This stuff, that's why that's why we constantly repeat this stuff and constantly go over it. You know what I'm saying? Year after year, we read through the Bible. Year after year, we read through the Bible twice, right? Technically, we're going through the Bible through through uh through our, our weekly Bible study and we reading through our, our 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 Bible club, whatever we call it, right? Our Bible in the year <laughs> group. You know what I'm saying? But like that's that's what you gotta do. Cause it's it's a lot. It's a lot to remember, it's a lot to think about, it's a lot to consider. All right. All this reading we be doing. That's right. <laughs> I'm saying that stuff, it, it just get in you, right? You spend enough time in this book and it's going to be in you. It's going to click. It's going to start to give you an understanding. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray out. 